Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about protein. You know, if I had a dollar for every time someone said to me, where do you get your protein? I would be filthy rich. The thing about protein is, it should be our rock bottom last nutritional concern. But the meat and dairy industry with its mega loud multi-billion dollar voice has drowned out the common sense and has made us believe that we need heaps of protein. So essentially we've been brainwashed. You know, in a world where we eat like pigs, but we're worried about a condition that only comes about through starvation, you know, it's really pathetic. And there isn't even a medical term for protein deficiency. Can you believe that? You know, Kwashioko and Marasmus are both caloric deficiencies. So they're not protein deficiencies. You know, like when you starve yourself, heaps of deficiencies are going to come about, of course. Protein is made up of amino acids, the building blocks of the body. There are 20 amino acids, eight of them which are essential, meaning we have to get them from the food. We can't create them ourselves in our body. We also recycle between 100 and 300 grams of protein a day. So we get a lot from our own bodies, you know, from used digestive enzymes. So our nutritional needs for protein are very small and they're being blown out of proportion. We need 5% of our calories from protein a day. And that figure came about in 1974 when the World Health Organization discovered that study after study was pointing towards us only needing 2.5% of our calories from protein. So the WHO, World Health Organization, decided, oh, let's just be safe and double that requirement to 5%. I recommend you get between 5 and 10% of your calories from protein. And this is very easily achieved if we just eat fruit all day. So say we ate watermelon for breakfast, bananas for lunch, and dates for dinner. We're going to get 5% or more easily. So there's no need to worry about getting enough on a raw vegan lifestyle or even a vegan lifestyle. Think about a time in your life when you needed a lot of protein. Try and think back. Well, you probably can't think back this far because it's when you were a baby. You know, when we're babies, we double in size. So we need protein to support that growth. And how much protein do we need? Well, from a mother's milk, we get about five to 6%. So that would suggest that that's all we need. You know, why later in life, when we're not meant to be growing, but some people are actually doubling in size, why should we then increase the amount of protein we need? It doesn't make sense. Say so you're constructing a house, and at the start of the construction, you need a lot of raw materials. You need a lot of bricks to build the house. But after that house is completed, if the bricks keep coming, then what are you going to do with them? They just start to become a problem around the house. And it's, it's the same with protein. If we have too much protein in our blood, then it can lead to all sorts of problems. We must remember that protein is made up of amino acids. So the word of focus here is acids. One particular amino acid is methionine, which is a sulfur containing amino acid, which can break down, which does break down into sulfuric acid in the blood. And this can deliver a dangerously high level of acid into the body. Not a good thing. And this is one of the reasons I avoid animal products because they are the highest 
in this amino acid, the sulfur containing amino acid. So next time you reach for the meat and dairy, please think about your bones because what happens is your bones and your teeth are drawn on for their alkaline materials such as calcium. So your body draws from your bones and your teeth to neutralize that acid in your body. The standard Western diet contains about 140 to 160 grams of protein per day. And this is a lot of protein. People are risking dissolving their bones and their teeth by eating this much. And the thing that happens is protein cannot be stored in the body, so it has to be metabolized through gluconeogenesis or excreted by the liver and kidneys. And when this happens through the liver and kidneys, they can become enlarged and diseased, which is obviously not nice at all. And also kidney stones can result and arthritis and other inflammatory diseases in the body. When we eat foods like fruits and vegetables, they're alkaline, you know, so we don't have to worry. Meat and dairy, animal products is acid. So acid equals bone loss. You know, there's enough protein in plants to build the largest animals on earth. You know, like cows and hippopotamuses and horses, elephants, giraffes. They all get enough protein. So it's got to be easy to build a human, isn't it, on plant foods? Oh, but bodybuilders need more protein. You know, they've got to have more protein. Well, this actually has not been proven to be the case at all. Of course, they need more calories because they're burning more calories. And they also need to support proper muscle rejuvenation and regeneration through eating enough carbohydrate calories. So if a bodybuilder gets sufficient calories just from fruit, they can build muscle. You know, I just eat fruits and vegetables and you know, I don't have a problem with you know, building muscle. meat does not build muscle okay training builds muscle when you go to the gym and you pump the iron you pump those weights that is when you're building the muscle and when you're sleeping that is when the muscle is building there is no data available to suggest that people need extra protein when they do extra activity like bodybuilding of course, they need extra calories, but not extra protein. Oh, but like, what about the people who, you know, lose so much muscle when they go vegan? Are they really losing muscle? Can you prove they're losing muscle? You know, I haven't had one person come to me, you know, with a DEXA scan. And say, look, Freely, here's results. Before vegan, I had this much muscle mass, and after vegan, I had this much muscle mass. Okay, it's possible if the person under-eats on calories because they lose their motivation to exercise. They begin exercising less, and of course their muscles start to atrophy. You know, it's just natural. You don't use your muscles, you're going to lose them. Everyone knows that. So you need to eat enough calories to support the motivation to exercise. So that's number one. When you go vegan, you lose a lot of uh, fat and you lose a lot of water weight. So you can lose the fat that was all covering your muscles, the fat in the water, and it was also rippling throughout the muscle. So it makes makes you appear bigger and sort of puffier, but it's not actual quality muscle tissue, but fat and fluid. So there's a reason that people look smaller after they go vegan. It's a good thing. You know, you want to get out that toxic fat and fluid.
So basically the take home is ignore the meat and dairy industry recommendations. They are going to cause disease in your body and in your mind. You know, diseases like renal failure and osteoporosis, arthritis, you know, you don't want these awful conditions. You really don't. So please ignore their recommendations and just listen to nature. You know, fruits and vegetables are perfect. They're alkaline. They will build a beautiful body and a beautiful mind. So just get those in as much as you can. Also, you know, avoid animal products because they're high in methionine, that sulfur-containing amino acid. I recommend you eat around 5 to 10% of your daily calories from protein and from fruits and vegetables. So essentially a low-fat raw vegan lifestyle or a low-fat cooked vegan lifestyle. Just remember, get those carbs in. And if you do decide to eat over 10% of your calories from protein, just be aware that you are peeing your bones and your teeth down the toilet. I know that sounds awful, but that's what's happening. You may as well just say goodbye to your bones and your teeth. So eat the alkaline fruits and vegetables. They're good for you. And, and you can build some muscle like this. <laughs>